All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 10 of the live stream. This is, uh, it's been a lot of fun putting these concerts together over the last few weeks, you know, seeing friends and hanging out with, um, you know, just colleagues and just talking and playing. But you know, today I, um, you know, I got a lot of requests to do something a little different. Uh, so I'm going to try it out. Um, you know, I've had, uh, you know, a lot of people sort of ask me uh, about what my approach to piano playing is. And, um, you know, truth be told, I'm always a bit hesitant to, to answer that because I never really view myself as a pianist. I've, uh, I've always viewed myself as a composer or, you know, just a musician who makes music. That happens to play the piano and some other things. And, um, and I've always used my approach uh, to the piano to help me, you know, write better music. Um, but that being said, I do have, uh, I do have some ideas uh, that I think uh, might be useful for you guys to know about piano playing. And I think they're so useful because really anyone can do them. It's super easy uh, to get into what I'm going to talk about today. You don't have to have any piano playing experience. You don't even have to read music at all. Um, and the, the amazing thing about this way of thinking is that it's also it can increase in difficulty without bound. Uh, so in other words, you can really keep working on it for the rest of your life. You can, it can be the first thing that you ever play on the piano. And if you become a master pianist, you can still keep challenging yourself with these exercises. I'm going to try to uh, do a little bit of that today. Uh, so it's going to be twofold. So you'll get to learn about it, and then you'll get to see me get back into it, because uh, I haven't done these things in a while. Um, but they're, they're super helpful. Uh, for, you know, for getting back into things for beginners or whatever skill level you're at. Um, so these things that we're going to work on today are just called drones. Uh, it's similar to what a woodwind player would call um, his long tones. Uh, so, you know, if you play, you know, saxophone or clarinet or brass instrument, you're always going to be playing long tones. And this is kind of what long tones are on the piano. And the reason it's so great for beginners is because you're only going to play one thing, and you're going to play that one thing over and over and over and over again without stopping. Uh, and so that's great because you don't really have to worry about what to play. It's the same thing. Um, but the way that you're going to play it and the, and the number of times that you're going to repeat it is where the challenge comes in. Um, so in order to make a drone, you know, let's look at your own body. You've got two hands. Uh, with five fingers on them, so that means that a drone can have one note uh, up to five notes, anywhere between one and five notes, okay? Uh, so, and the thing is, the notes do not matter. I can't stress that enough. The notes do not matter. You can pick any combination of notes, one note to five notes. So I'm going to show you one. I'm going to make one, um, and in fact, uh, to help out, if you guys are going to watch this later, I've got a second camera going here. Uh, I'm going to start that up, and then that way you can sort of see my hands in case, you know, you want to get a little bit more into what I'm doing. So let me just start that. Okay, cool. So that'll help give you, like, sort of an overhead view uh, if you want to come back and watch it later in the archive. So um, I'm just going to make, I'm going to pick a set of four. I, I think I did that in a little demo video for that, so I'll pick the, the same notes. I'm take four notes. Uh, for those of you that play piano, uh, those notes are C. E flat, A flat, and C. Okay. And again, like I said, it does not matter what the notes are. I just picked these four because they sound nice and I'm going to be playing them like a thousand times. So, you know, those are my four notes C, E flat, A flat, and C. Okay. So the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play those four notes over and over and over and over again. And I'm using, uh, I'm using these four fingers. I'm using my pinky, my ring finger, my index finger, and my thumb. I'm just going to play them over and over and over again. I'm not going to get any faster or any slower. I'm going to try to keep my volume in control. And let's just see how I do.
okay. Yeah, so that's how that, that works. It's kind of a strange thing to listen to. Um, but you notice how I was playing at different speeds. Sometimes I slowed down. Sometimes I was playing extremely fast. But the thing is, no matter what I was doing, I was always trying to maintain evenness. Uh, and that, that's the thing about these exercises. The tempo does not matter. That's why it can be done by a beginner. So the notes don't matter. You can pick any four notes, any two notes, any three notes, any five notes, whatever you want. Play them over and over again in whatever tempo you can. But the thing is that the tempo is not the challenge. The steadiness and the control is the challenge. So even for me to play very slowly, but perfectly evenly and with steadiness is a challenge. I mean, I could just do this. It's like, you know, that may seem a little strange, but it's like, you know, try to do that for five minutes without messing up and you quickly see, you quickly see that you know, this is hard. Uh, it takes mental stamina and mental focus and control as well as physical stamina and control. Um, so like I said, you don't have to play as fast as I was playing. You can play in whatever tempo you can. The challenge is control. Okay, so that's, so that's what I did. I picked a set, that's what that's called, a set of four notes, C, E flat, A flat, and C. And so now we're gonna talk about the next step to that. Um, you're, you're going to then think to yourself, okay, if I take those same four notes, how many ways can I play them? So the calculation is, um, uh, at least in my, in my understanding, uh, it involves a factorial, essentially. Uh, so I have a four note set, I have my four notes. So that means I do four times three times two times one. So four times three is 12, times two is 24, times one is 24. Uh, so that means there's 24 different arrangements of those four notes uh, that I could play. So wh what do I mean by that? So I'm just doing this, but I could do this, this, this. Right, you, you get the idea. I can. I can rearrange that set of those same four notes um, in a lot of ways. Now, there are going to be redundancies. Um, there are going to be redundancies um, that I'll probably talk a little bit more about in another like, class kind of thing. Uh, so it, it ends up being a little bit less than 24, practically speaking. But mathematically speaking, it's 24 different arrangements. Okay? So now, uh, and those redundancies come from, you know, playing the same thing backwards, or when you loop things, you end up getting the same, uh, you end up getting the same pattern, and then your hands, you know, it's, a, it's a, like I said, it's a whole nother thing you gotta go into. So let's just stick with 24 for now. So I'm just gonna take those same four notes, and I'm going to just use a permutation. Instead of doing this, C, E flat, A flat, C, now I'm going to do E flat C, A flat C. So I just switched two notes around. That's all I did. And now I'm going to cycle that in a long time. Let's see what happens. So it's a little bit different. It's, it's a little bit harder. You know, it's still, it sounds like a blur, because I'm doing it so quickly, but I'm fighting for control, always, always trying to stay in control. That's, so like I said, the tempo doesn't matter, control matters. And you can hear the difference when it's a little slower. Started to, I started to cave there at the end. It might, like, and the thing is, you might not even have heard it, but I could feel it. You see what I'm saying? And, and the idea is I, in theory, 
should be able to hold that indefinitely. Right. And, and, and there was a time when I was doing this more frequently where I, I guess I was a little closer to that. I could, I could do this you know, for long periods of time without messing up. And that's really the goal is to go for as long as you can. Uh, and you'll, you'll feel within yourself when you're in control and when you're not in control. Like that's all we care about is control. So you can do those drones with all of those permutations, okay? Now, some of you may be thinking, all right, so but there's, there's a problem, especially if you go back later and watch from this angle, you can see my left hand a little better. Um, it, and that problem comes from the mirror symmetry of the, of the human body. So that thing is, in other words, I'm playing the same notes in each hand, but I'm using different fingers to play those notes. So that's an issue in a way. So I'm, let, let's go back to the original version. So I'm playing C, E flat, A flat, C, okay? So I'm playing C, E flat, A flat, C. But the thing is, in my left hand, I start with my pinky, and in my right hand, I start with my thumb. Then in my left hand, I use my ring finger, then my right hand is index, right? So, you know, in other words, you know, my thumb isn't over here. That would be, that would be bad, right? So the thing is, that means what I can do is take the same notes, and again, you'll see it really easily from here, and just use the same fingers instead. So instead of doing this, I'm just gonna use my left thumb with my right thumb, my left index with my right index, my uh, left ring finger with my right finger, and then both my pinkies together. So you see, so my, my left hand ends up doing it backwards. So instead of them going in similar motion, they're going in contrary, mirror symmetric motion, like my body. Okay, so you can see that here. Right, so if I go back to that other permutation that I had, I could, I could then, instead of playing the same notes in each hand, I'm just gonna play the same fingers in each hand and listen to what happens. Right, so that means I can do my long tones in similar motion, playing the same note in each hand. Or I can do them in contrary motion, playing the same finger in each hand. Um, both of them are important. Uh, that ends up being one of the redundancies because if you, you know, your left hand is just playing a different permutation than your right hand is playing. Like mathematically, some of them do cancel out. But, uh, but that's how it works. And like I said, you can, you, the notes don't matter. You can pick four random notes. You do this. Just pick four notes next to each other, you know, if you're just starting with the piano. And you can do these exercises. It won't sound very good, but that's not the point. This isn't a musical exercise. This is a pianistic exercise. It's physical mastery. It has nothing to do with music. Like I said, I picked these four notes, so you know, at least they're harmonious. Because like, if you're gonna listen to me play this stuff like 10,000 times, it might as well, you know, be somewhat pleasant. But you know, that's, that's how that works with the, the change of direction. Now, there's one more thing that you can, um, uh, there's one more thing that you can do with these, uh, these long tones. So, you know, at first I was using, playing the same notes in each hand, then I was using the same fingers in each hand, but my hands are still not physically doing the same thing. Uh, and the only way to truly have my hands do the same thing is to use mirror symmetry on the piano. Okay, so uh, those of you who aren't pianists, this might be a little weird, but those of you who are pianists, I mean, you may or may not know, the piano is mirror symmetric around the note D. Uh, so those of you that don't play the piano, you can look over my shoulder and see which note D is. But there's D, and it's also symmetric around A flat. So that means that if you move outward using the note D as a mirror, you will get the same physical pattern on the keyboard. So you see, I'm on D, I get black and black, white, 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 black, black, white, white, black, black, white, white, it, it's perfect. Now, the thing is, 
what that means is that I can take that permutation that's in my right hand, say I'm doing that, and I'm gonna reflect it over the note D into my left hand. Reflect it across the note D into my left hand. So let's see what happens. E flat becomes C sharp. C becomes E. A flat maps to itself. A flat is A flat. And then C maps to E. Right, so you get something that sounds strange. I won't say it sounds bad, because I don't really believe it sounds bad. It sounds a little strange, but that's because it has nothing to do with music at all. Like, it's just a pianistic pattern. It, it just, it's a physical thing. It's not related to music, but you get this. Which is actually, you know, it's a, it's a beautiful pentachord. It's a really interesting sound. Right, so you get these sort of crazy things just coming from those five notes. So now I'm going to hold that long tone uh, in mirror symmetry. And so that's, that's how it works. So you see it sounds really weird, but for m the mind's sake, it's an excellent exercise. So again, to review, you can do these in, you know, playing the same note in each hand, playing the same finger in each hand, or you can just mirror symmetry onto the piano, which is probably gonna make something that sounds weird. But physically, you will be doing the same thing on each side of your body. So, uh, so that's that, that's that. Now, uh, one thing I didn't really talk about is dynamics, okay? Uh, meaning the volume. So again, uh, beginners, when you're first starting this, like I said, you can pick your four notes, your three notes, go at whatever tempo you want, be very slow, just hold it in control. Um, but now we have to talk about how loudly or softly you're playing. So let me, uh, you know, let me, let me get another set, and get four different notes. And we'll keep the two C's, they sound nice. So we'll just... Okay, now I'm doing C, F, G, and C. Okay, so so that's, uh, that's what that is. Now, uh, the thing about it is, uh, you know, I'm gonna just do the exact same things I've been doing. Let me pick a permutation for that, because I don't want to do this. It's like, you know, let's just, let's, uh, We'll flip the two middle notes around. So instead of doing C, F, G, C, I'm gonna do C, G, F, C. Okay, and I'm gonna do it in, uh, I'm gonna play the same finger in each hand. So. But I'm gonna add dynamics and I'm gonna try to keep that tempo in the exact same place, keep it in control, and I'm gonna play as loudly as I can, as softly as I can, as loudly as I can, just moving up and down the volume. Let's see, let's see how it goes.
So it's pretty difficult. You can do it in different registers, though, uh, if you want. You, you can play it wherever you want. It doesn't really matter. So you see, I got really, really loud and then tried to bring it back down. And that's what you can do uh, to, to add that element of dynamics. Now, so you may be thinking, okay, well, I'm doing four note sets. You know, like I said, you can pick any number of sets or any number of notes in your set. You know, uh, what happens if you pick two notes or something like that? Then you just, well, you end up with a factorial of two times one, which is two. So let's say I just pick two notes. I'm going to pick D and E. So that means my permutations are either D, E, or E, D. So you just end up with a trill. Uh, and by doing a trill, you get both permutations. So because they overlap one another. Uh, and that's one of those redundancies I was talking about. Uh, it should really be two different things I can do. But if you just play a trill, you end up getting, you end up getting both sets. So just do that. I can even do it in mirror symmetry, because I'm on D anyway. You just And that's how that works. You can just hold that trill. Uh, hold it quietly, um, hold it loudly, do, you know, do as much as you can. I swear that used to be easier. That's uh, it's kind of hard, uh, but you you get the idea. So I'm just holding that trill. But you noticed, especially those of you that might be looking over here, that I was changing fingers, and that brings us to the last thing that I'm going to talk about for today. So I, you know, like I said, you pick any notes you want, play them in whatever tempo you can. Try to control that tempo. Start to mess with the dynamics, go up and down. And the last thing you can mess with is fingerings. Okay. So if you're playing a five note set, then there's only one combination of fingers you can use because you're using all five fingers. Uh, but you notice that when I'm playing a two note set, like a trill, uh, I was using all sorts of different fingers. I was using my thumb and my index, my middle and my thumb, my index, and you know, my, these two fingers. You know, I was changing fingers and doing more or less my best uh, to try to keep those things in control no matter what fingers I'm using. So that's the last thing you can switch, is you can play those permutations with different fingerings, like use as many as you can. Obviously, the more notes that there are in your set, the fewer fingerings that you have, but the more permutations. Uh, and the fewer notes you have in your set, if you have a two note set, then you have lots of possible fingering combinations, uh, but no permutations. So it all balances out. Uh, and ideally, what you want to try to do is practice you know, sets of different length, two notes, three notes, five notes. Um, play them in all the permutations you can with all of the fingerings you can. Um, and it's a huge number, uh, but it is finite, so it can be finished in some ways. Um, but it's, it's a great thing to do. You can be an extremely advanced pianist, world's greatest pianist, and I think you can still get something out of this. Uh, and you, this could be your first day playing piano. You don't have to read music at all. You can just pick random notes and start to work your mind because you play piano with your mind not really with your hands i mean your hands do some stuff like you know i have to be in shape things like that but you know for the most part i'm doing this with my mind like my hands are not in you know crazy shape from practicing hours and hours and hours for uh, every day but up here uh, i still do try to stay a bit sharp so uh you know i hope that was helpful for you guys 
uh, I'll do more and more of these, you know, th because the, the progressions to these exercises get insane. Like, the, what I just showed you today is, like, that's the, found, that's the beginning. Like, this opens a gateway um, into many, many terrible things, uh, te technically speaking, um, but challenging and beautiful things, um, you know, from a, from a mental and spiritual perspective. So I can foreshadow that a little bit for you and, and sort of show you where I'm going to go with this. Uh, the next time I do one of these. Because, you know, you notice right now I'm not moving. Like, I'm playing the same four notes over and over again. And the, the next thing that you can add to this is that you can start moving the permutations. You know, uh, see, I have that same one. I mean, you can just start moving that by different intervals. Too. Right, those sort of moving in half steps, moving in different, uh, moving in different intervals. You know, you know, those like moving in whole steps, half steps, all these different things. You know, alternating things. Ah. You know, so they the the permutations can start moving around. Uh, and then the, the other thing is that you can start adding meter to this. That's, that's where music starts to truly be born. Uh, because I'm, I'm playing these things all in one tempo or holding one tempo, but there is no meter, there's no time signature. And once you add a time signature on top of these, um, that's, where, um, that's where music goes to another level of art because it becomes expression both in time and through time. You know, you can start playing in five, I guess. Ah. So, you know, uh, that's kind of where it goes. So, you know, I can uh, flesh out some, some more interesting lectures on that sort of stuff. And, um, and I'll talk about all of those things. And then you can start combining move, rhythm, playing different sets in each hand against each other. That's where counterpoint basically comes from. Um, and it, uh, you know, so, you know, I'll brush up on these things myself. It'll be kind of nice because it'll give me an opportunity to get back into it and kind of bring you uh, along with me as I'm doing it. So, um, yeah, hope it was helpful. And uh, next week's live stream is going to be a lot of fun. My, uh, my good friend Matt Graybill is coming. He's going to play some Liszt and Chopin. Um, we'll have a chat. And, uh, you know, as always, huge thanks to, uh, to, uh, to Pop Drone for helping make this possible, for, uh, you know, uh, putting together so many things to make this all work. Um, and, you know, like I said, always, you know, like, comment on it. You know, let us know where you're listening from, you know, what you like, what you want to hear more of. And, um, yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great next few weeks. So uh, I think we'll be going until at least November. Uh, so we've got more music, more classes and stuff like that. So, you know, see you guys next time.